Uh, there's a couple things that I propose. Uh, you guys are in Kanani Gisai, Kahayat Yukatangi Dat, Ha in Kanani Kzutasa Ejiu, Kadata Tinersai Yeti. A it aya Kaskei. Aya do eight gach to ach, a ka away gach to two, dishkasnigi, yel ka to cock, yakisku cake a dot. A it rayawe verb conjugation hook osani dot, you gach to the art, a ka gothway verbs dot, you gach to the art. So here's what I would uh, propose. Let me open the chat room here. Uh, the order that we'll kind of do things is you'll tell us your name regarding Klingit. Tell us uh, what you have and what you need. And then we'll listen to A Raven Story by Susie James. And then we'll read that story. And then we'll talk about, uh, I made these conjugation verb cards this summer. We'll take a look at those and see if we want to get some of those. I can send those out to you guys and bring them in here. Probably take about a week or two. And then we'll do, we'll just start looking at some slides that I made that talk about how Clinket verbs work. And then we'll just sort of go from there. Is there anything else anybody wants to try and do? Does that sound all right? Okay. And those of you online, just shout out or use the uh, chat room. We had a few snags getting set up. I got to look at the link. Last semester, the link was the same every time. Now I think it's changing a little bit. So some folks might be jumping on after we all figure it out. So. I'll look at that over the weekend and see if I can figure out what's going on. Okay, so your name, and when it comes to learning Klingit, using Klingit, tell us what you have and what you need. Who wants to go first? Anybody online? Anybody in the room? Anybody anywhere? Oh, yeah. So specifically, I guess it's a pretty wide open question. Like, what do you think you have a good grasp of in terms of language, knowing it? I always think of things in terms of, when I think of fluency, I think of how likely are you to understand things you hear and to be able to say things you want to say. That's kind of a pretty basic view, but for me, that's what it comes down to, so that you don't have to rely on another language necessarily. So you tell us your name, and just, you know, it's a pretty abstract, you know, but it could be, I feel like I've got a good grasp of this thing. Uh, I'm thinking that I need more help in this kind of area. And we'll do these kind of check-ins every now and then, because that helps me figure out what kinds of things, you know, my idea in, in teaching this class is there's a set of things we're going to rely on, some stories, some drills, but also I want to see are there things that you're trying to, questions you're looking to answer, and it might take me to, you know, I might have to dig around, make some different slideshows, but that's my idea for advanced Clinkit is helping you get to some of these areas that you realize you need to get to, and then as uh, next week we'll get into kind of a slightly different mode in terms of how we run the class where everybody will bring something to talk about and we'll spend 45 minutes just talking about stuff and then we'll spend 45 minutes doing some sort of lesson. So that's how I'd like to transition next week. This is our first week so we're just kind of taking it easy. Uh, but yeah, so the question is what do you feel like you get a handle on? And you know, you're not bragging, you're just sort of saying yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm getting pretty good with this stuff, but I feel like I need some help in this stuff. And we're, we're doing all of this in a, a collaborative and a positive atmosphere. 
um, the idea we're just trying to identify gaps and, and fill those gaps. That's really one of the big goals here and just make it put more stuff in your toolbox, make it more natural to hear things, to understand things that you hear, and to engage in the language the way that you want to. Well, let's go first. Hook. Okay. Uh, uh, I can. I think where I'm. I feel like where I'm at is. I can understand can get, um, when someone is speaking, and it's 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 a luxury to be able to. Listen to recorded videos or recorded audio and go back and find words that that I don't quite understand and able to kind of piece together the story. But when it comes to creating sentences or saying certain things or learning about how to create certain verbs with understanding the roots mm -hmm. and understanding um, there's just there's just certain there's certain linguistic terms that I've heard thrown around that I've never had the courage after they've been thrown around so much to mm -hmm. ask what they were, such as like classifiers. Okay. And so things like that were challenging for me. Sheesh. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Someone else in the room? There's only. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I can't really understand clink it when it's said, but I recognize the patterns of it. Like I recognize where kind of where the verb root is and the pronouns and things like that. And I think I just need to listen more to like be comfortable hearing the language and definitely work on conjuring verbs because there's so many things involved in doing that but it's i get the basics but i don't know if i could do it fast enough to speak because it feels very much like i have all the parts mm -hmm. but i don't know how to make them into like fluent speaking like not necessarily even Fluent in terms of understanding the language well, but fluent in that it flows nicely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when I speak, it sounds very choppy, which makes sense, but I don't know how to fix it, I guess. Okay. It's cheesh. It's cheesh. Um, you go, uh, so, um, see, I guess I'll start with what I have before I start just like trashing on myself. Um, I think, like, in listening, um, I, I think I have a pretty small vocabulary, so. Um, I can recognize what part of speech everything is in a sentence or when people are talking, even if it's kind of extended, even if it's mm -hmm. um, kind of like a big chunk of language. But that just makes it kind of the more frustrating when I don't know what the different parts, what, like, I'm like, I know this is an adverb or I know this is a verb. I'm just not sure what verb it is. Um, so. That's I'd like to kind of learn more phrases, learn more vocabulary, so I kind of fill that in, and then also um, kind of nail down like how the classifier works, just in terms of reading um, and in speaking. So I think like the first time through using like the plus i, minus i, or minus i plus i. Mm -hmm. um, it's like it feels like it's all like right there, 
but it's um, kind of need to go through another run and learn it again. Okay. Yeah. It's cheese. And then a lot more vocabulary. It's learning yeah. a lot more nouns, a lot more um, kind of a lot more nouns and a lot more verbs, and then then I'll be perfect. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Close Chan, ye hut dosak, stinky feet. Do you lobbying for a new name? We could, we could make I don't it. feel like I can at this point. I don't know. It's up to you guys. Oh, and it's just got a lot of history and <laughs> a lot of people supporting. So. <laughs> um, but, anyways, I am taking intermediate and advanced at the same time. So, I have some trepidation about like what I have. I th I think um, what I'm good at is like learning useful phrases and memorizing them. Um, just like using them as much as I can and like um, Ishmael talked about like chunking it, like just learning a group of phrases that are useful and eventually you'll kind of figure out how they work. But just like gathering, collecting things is kind of what I've been doing. Um, what I need, I feel like, is um, more of that, and then just a little more general knowledge of like how to understand what I'm looking at. I know that I know that'll come with more time in intermediate. Um, but yeah, just the opportunity, like, to speak. I think, like, in. Um, always like correcting yourself when you feel fearful because uh, so much more like there's so much that we're all capable of when we just like lessen the anxiety a little bit and yeah. that's something I always have to remind myself but I don't know it's like pretty vague stuff okay okay good as cheese uh, okay so online the first chukan uh, a tunach you a doodly at a gosh test microphone's not working, but she says, I have a grasp on most nouns and some verbs. I have access to elders and some conversations. Need more opportunities to stay in the language. We have a few games we play, but that is very specific vocabulary. I get easily discouraged when I can't translate in real time live conversations. So the more I can be exposed to that, the better. I also need to do work on verb identification conjugation. Yeah, okay. yeah, I find that a lot of people at this point, and, you, and a lot of you, you're all at different points, but in the same kind of neighborhood. Uh, but I think it's common that your brain gets frustrated because it's actually translating into English all the time. And so to get your brain to just say, we don't need to convert it, we can just go with it. But then that's, that's, a, that's the the biggest hurdle for learning any language anywhere, uh, but probably in particular in America. But um, yeah, so we keep talking about that and working on just some strategies. Okay, anybody online? We got. Uh, 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 okay. Um. I want. I wanted to uh, to say something about what happened here. Uh, Pansy Allen, Hajiwanak, Oscar Tudewugut, Dehyagi Shuwihihi, Kahyek Yudusagan Kingekinach, Daklawedi Satiyan, Deshitanyadi, Duish Jake Jackson Yeshan Yudusagan, Dutla Mary Sydney Watsi. You do sagan. Do hook less Allen, ging George Wan city. K jin jin kat tak shu hihi. Pansy ka less wuch has woody shah. Kahyek Jackson's point. Days lind k uawat. Kahyek kega to he on. Ka kahyek. Tlakat ka it wudishi, Tlachmasaha to woo yanik, 
katlach masa gunushish yeha tuu yeti du dot tutu datani klach masa wutu sihan hut. Ah, you go away. Yeah, what would it do? Was a city a ya kehanakuku di awa hakani yan kahakun yan. Yeah, what a way had to us a goo. Ekaya to suku hakusti ye kaha yuk a tungi. A tin away katu nago. Yeah, a way got to day. Ah, hanak has code the key as the Tutla Anna has to at was cool. Hasaya at you would not haji yes. Touch us haji yes, coa. Had the trunk sani a ye kerra. A joy had to was a goo. Connachaway, wooching ye jagar to nay. Get the cut away duck car, sling get away. Connachaway are two day ye Ya to chalk away, ya a cleat hus a claw to ease to ease, ha a claw to ease to claw. Dark day has for cochon. A joy has to to was a goo. Has to hunky hus, ha has to carny yan has our satini. Ye away wush the sail, ye has our satinian. Jadakasa a dugu. At was kuhu, Kakusa Hansu. Has to yak aya Uhan Akaya yegar to Sene, Wush the seh yegar to Sene, Hayuk tangi, Ha at was ku Kakusa Han. You go a one duck cursing it, a day slain ku. Me, uh, you can do a song. Uh, could you put me on your email list? I, I did register today, but I didn't get a, a link to. Uh, oh, yeah, it's all good. Uh, as far as uh, what I'd uh, like to work or what I have been working on, um, uh, I think if I if I have a verb theme, I, I'm I can pretty well play with that verb uh, in a lot of different ways. So, so I'm comfortable with that. Uh, I think what I need to do is remember more words. Uh, and the other thing uh, I've been uh, doing a lot since uh, you left is just uh, listening. So, uh, Hashuka, listening to those uh, tapes, uh, Lagoon, listening to her videos, and uh, uh, and I, I think it's good just hearing the language, just being in the language that way. But I, I don't know if you have anything about. Um, instead of just listening, how do I listen better? Or, or what can help me listen? Um, so that, I mean, that's something. Uh, uh, I guess the other thing that, that I'll get out of this is just having the opportunity to speak or to uh, be in the language and, and hear the language with uh, other people. Uh, Miguel, uh, it's been a while. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, good cheese. Uh, wherever the microphone is, if you could find a way to get a little closer to it next time, that would help us be able to hear. It's a little ginky quiet. Okay, good cheese. Uh, any anyone else online want to go? Um, 
uh, telephone app, Tles Yanwu Ne, Clock to Uyes, Achawe, Achide Audatani, Achide Audatan, Ka Ha say a our Ach, Ach a two day you a do a tangi to Nach. Hue, um, things that I know, I find that I have a lot of memory of nouns because I've been learning that's all I knew how to do when I was first trying to learn and I learned a lot of nouns and finally realized that nouns is the tip of the iceberg and I began to try to learn a few verbs but I know a lot of nouns on just about any subject you can think of weird stuff too um however um oh and i i find that i can recognize four to, four or five tenses in a conversation if i'm just listening to an to uh speakers talking back and forth and um i i um find myself thinking in Tlingit and struggling to uh flip the switch back to english even though i can't say everything that i want to say um i find my tongue stumbling over sentences and putting clinket uh, nouns and phrases in my english sentence when i'm talking to somebody who doesn't understand it at all and so i think that's good um let's see uh did i lose you guys like, like we're just mute on our end so we don't okay <laughs> okay because my um my um screen went blank on my computer okay so i'll just finish talking and then flock to who said she would speak um so my goal i would what i would like to do is to be able to have a conversation have a everyday conversation i would like to go through my day having a normal conversation in Tlingit. I would like my students to come into my classroom and just dive right in and not have any, have very little English if, if not no English. And so that means I need to have everyday conversation skills. And I've been building on that, but um, that's a never ending project. That's my goal. I want to be able to have a conversation. I don't care that much about ceremony. I care about it, but I can't use it. I don't care about um, philosophy. I, I'm not fluent enough to get anything out of a philosophical conversation. I want to be able to talk to my grandkids. I want to talk to um, middle school kids. I want to talk to my college kids about things that are important to both them and I. Um, and so that's it. Clock do eat cool, huh? Uh, can you hear me? Oh. Okay. Oh, they said ah. Oh. Okay. Uh, you me for Um. Well, I know. Um. I know quite a few nouns. I know some verbs. Um. And getting used to uh, hearing the language more often enough to understand what majority of what people are saying. Uh, that's something that I want to work on is to be able to understand more of what's being said like in conversations. Um, I also would like to work on. Um, I guess being able to take apart what we're saying and just to help me understand how it's getting put together so that I can start speaking more and more fluid sentences. So that's my goal. Okay, good I do so ET.
Uh, Shana Kate. Okay. Wasai Sa. Um, <clears throat> I do a lot of reading and listening to tapes. I need to translate. I, I stay away from that. I'm scared of it. Um, I've been working a lot on my small words, chapter seven and eight of House and Ake. And that makes me <clears throat> able to recognize chunks of sentences. Um, I'm starting to uh, recognize uh, tense, the tenses of verbs. Um, but uh, man, that's about where I'm at. Um, last year when I did this, when I started your class, I did not understand anything. And now when you talk, I get those blocks and chunks and I picture how to spell the words in my head. So, you know, I'm encouraged, but man, um, still really hard. Yeah, okay, can cheese. Anyone else? Is that everybody? Okay. Yekecha uh, Yohan, Uh This it's really it's helpful to check in and just to sort of see. I I want to share a couple, uh, I guess, resources, and then we'll shift to listening to some audio, and then we're just going to think about. One thing that I think really helps if you want to transition from really close listening to a, a sort of a more, it's just a different type of listening, is take a recording that's kind of short and that you're very familiar with uh, and listen to it a bunch and then find someone you can practice with and actually say the thing that they're saying. Like try to get it verbatim, like try to get it as close as you can and not like, uh, here, let me play a chunk and then say a chunk, but more like, let me tell you this entire story the exact way that they're telling it. And then another, if you don't have someone you can practice with, you can record yourself telling that story. You can listen to it and then listen to the other version and see what kind of things were hard for you to remember. And sometimes you can walk your way into this. I did this a lot with Coach uh, Ish, Johnny C. Jackson, his version of I would tell it in English, then I would say little parts, I would pick little parts of it that I felt comfortable saying in Tlingit. And then I started telling it to kids where I would tell it in Tlingit first and then in English. And then I started just telling it to my kids, just, you know, I tell it to my kids just in Tlingit. And so that's a really good practice uh, because there's often a lot of little things that they're, they're, they're doing that really link things and give it this sort of kind of feeling. But that, that's again, that's dealing, when you're dealing with stories, it's such an elevated form of language. So it is good to think about the day-to-day -day stuff, uh, which has a lot of time references and other things. So um, we'll practice uh, both of those things, the big language for the oratory and also just day-to-day -day stuff, like what do you do, you know, because what, the big thing is getting beyond wasaiati, right? Because what I find that that's for a lot of people, you encounter two people, see each other, they both know some shingit. Wasaiati, heshwasa khatuti, wa'eqo'a khatyake, what are you doing, right? It just switches, like after that, how are you doing thing? And so to push ourselves to go beyond that, and then we're also going to have to take the language into all these different realms. And it's going to take sometimes some work. Some of our speakers might get uh, frustrated. Other ones might have fun when we start figuring out how do we say uh, change the diaper? And how do we say uh, we beat them at basketball and Tommy scored, you know, 33 points or whatever. You know, so there's a bunch of different things we might have to kind of figure out how to how to do. And some of it is a reconstruction, and some of it we got to take the language into these new realms. But I do want to show you guys some, uh, some things that are out there to make sure that you're familiar with these. 
uh, tools. So the I guess one of them would be this new uh, dictionary project. And so this is, uh, I got permission from uh, Jillian's story to use everything from the Clinkit Verb Dictionary. And then uh, I went through and grabbed everything from the Kerry Edwards Dictionary of Klingit. And then I'm going through this big database that Weha, Jeff Lear, put together uh, and incorporating a whole bunch of nouns into here. And then also the verb work of Khaoki Shawu. Not all of it. Uh, there are certain things. Like, I think when you look at a verb, you go command, which is do it, prohibitive, don't do it, imperfective, it's happening or it is that way, negative imperfective, it's not happening or it isn't that way. And for a lot of verbs that could mean like does it and doesn't do it, you know, like he eats Rice Krispies or whatever. And then perfective, it happened. Uh, negative perfective, it didn't happen or it didn't become that way. It did become that way, it didn't become that way. And future. It will happen or it will be that way. It won't happen. It won't be that way. Those are your base modes, tenses that you need to learn how to do. And so hopefully by the end of this semester, you've got to put a good grasp on that. You could take, you could look up a verb and you'll know how to put it into all of those modes. Uh, that, that means processing a bunch of information and storing like, what does this mean? What does that mean? Because that information signals certain things for those modes. Um, and so that's what I put into this dictionary because she also has other, there's lots of other complicated modes, repetitive and perfective, uh, perfective habitual, negative perfective habitual, uh, hortative, uh, conditional, uh, there's a few different types of potentials and we'll talk about what, what does that stuff mean. They're really big linguistic terms that it's not important that you know what that term means. The, the bigger thing is you know what that verb is doing. And as you see people use it, uh, and then you sort of work more with elders, you'll see how to use those types of things. Like uh, one that I learned a couple years ago that I just, I didn't know how to say that. Does anyone know how to say before I was born? So if I'm telling a story and I'll say, well, before I was born, blah, blah, blah. So there's like I was born. And so you'd say So that's um I'll put this one up. So uh, and those of you who are online, if you see me doing something on the computer and you're not seeing it on your screen, that means I forgot to screen share, so always tell me if I did that. Um I think this is how you spell it. So, uh, and so this is before I was born, right? And so it's a really interesting sort of uh, verb mode, and I'll show you where it comes from. So if we did a Google search for Clinkit verbs, this online Clinkit verb dictionary is the one that we want to use, not the 575 verbs, because this one has more. This one has over 1,100. So we click here, and then this is the Clinkit index. And I recommend you just leave this thing open on your computer, on your phone, so that you can just scroll to it. If you leave it open, sometimes web browsers like to refresh. But on a phone, like I could be out at a camp with no internet, no cell service, and I can still use this. And so uh, let me zoom in so we can actually read it. So we're going to go down and find the verb T, which is to be born, or just to be, right? And so this is telling you there's a verb root T. When we expand it, each of these ones in yellow means there's, those are a separate verb. The ways you make a verb in Clinkit is you either change the classifier, or you add a thematic prefix, or you put some stuff before the verb. Those are the three ways you can make new verbs in Clinkit. And sometimes it's a totally different verb. 
right? Like yati can to be, it can mean to be, but it can also mean to be like something. And that's a different verb. So then we go down here and we see born, exist, live. And when we expand that, this shows us these different ways that this verb can be, um, these different modes or these different tenses, however you want to talk about that. And so we'll see like kudziti, it exists. Keshtusti, it doesn't exist. Tudziti, it was born. Keshtuwusti, it wasn't born. Yekukwasti, it will be born. Keshyekukwasti, it won't be born. Tukakwasti, let it exist. Tukas teach. This is the one uh, that you would have for, uh, means it's that way, it exists every time, it keeps, it's always coming back, like mold or something like that, I don't know. And then kukas teach. It hasn't been born yet. So this is the one that you're looking at. Um, and I think I added one too many A's right there. So for here, so then it hasn't been born yet. So this would also, this is this, and so when they call it perfective habitual negative, that's like a weird term. It really means it hasn't happened yet. So this is one like, uh, hey, do you like, uh, do you like Indian cheese? And you can say, I haven't eaten it yet. And that's, this is the form that you would use. And so, you're going to go down to ha, and you would look up ha to eat it, and you'd go down and find this one. I haven't eaten it yet. And that could, that could, in context, that could mean I've never had it before. But it could also mean, you know, uh, I have this thing that I'm saving because I haven't eaten it yet. So, and then the, what we're getting here is a slightly different, you know, with that kudziti and that kudziti, there's actually two different verbs to talk about being born. Khat kudziti, I was born. Kudziti, I was born. They're slightly different because one was like, I was born, like there was my birth. And then the other one's more like, I came out, right? They're slightly different. And so this one, ch causes the klesh to contract to just an L, tukastiji. And so it was really neat to go to uh, the elders, Marge Dutson, uh, Shakshani, and uh, George Davis, Kahwan Ish, and just to get some of these from them because we were trying to figure out. I can't remember the context, but uh, when they said that, I was like, oh, wow, I've been thinking about how to say something like that. Anyway, so this is the, uh, the clinket verb database. Uh, another uh, database, if you're interested, it's more of a, not really a database, but more of um, just a web page. clinkitlanguage.com slash media slash nouns. If you're looking for the word for something and you can't find it in the existing dictionaries, like if you go in here and you did a search and you're looking for some type of mushroom or something, um, like so this comes up. And then, but if you couldn't find something in here, you could look for it right here, right? So you could do a web search right here. Uh, it's a little bit, it's kind of a little bit more like raw data, so it's not as easy to use as some of the dictionaries. And the, the dictionary that I've been working on, I'm trying to clean up some things. Uh, but I want to make sure that you guys knew about these, some other pretty key resources. Uh, the Clinket Verb Dictionary. So I, I think you've all hopefully used this by now. Uh, this has a yellow cover and it's divided into two sections. You can read the, the text that talks about Clinket grammar, but it's a little bit outdated, like we don't use some of those terms anymore. But I think it's fun to sort of see how did, think, how did people think about Clinket grammar uh, 40 years ago, 45 years ago, I don't know, what was this thing? 1973. Yeah, so 45 years ago this book came out. 
And then, uh, but the primary thing is English to Clinkit, where you can go look up a word, uh, like we'll go find swim, just because there's a bunch of those. We were talking about these the other day. So then here's a bunch of swim verbs, depending on what type of swimming we're talking about, uh, whether there's singular or plural. And so we see the root is changing. Och is to slap something. Ock is for something to swim underwater. Keen is a, a, a school of fish to all swim together. Uh, here's the Yahoo verb, which is, you know, dog paddling. Uh, Quan is uh, a group of them. Here's another. So the who has to do with sort of more of a slow meandering type of a swim. Uh, so Jodahu is uh, for ducks to swim in circles. And I'm working on this big translation project, and I just don't think English has a match for Jodahu. Because it's for like a duck sitting on the water just going kind of really slow and just cruising. I don't know. Uh, and then here they are going in a group. Uh, and then this one is probably uh, a little bit different. And then yaudza ah is for something to sort of poke its head through the surface. And so the ah verb here means to kind of examine something or to look at it. Kun is the plural verb form of ah. Uh, cease is to swim fast. And it's also for, you can also do that, I think, in a canoe, if someone's really cruising in a canoe. And then uh, goo is like to swim in, a, especially of the killer whales, keep yai on the guin, it comes from that. Uh, and so that's, that's, you know, the English side. The clinket side, you would be looking up verb roots, like if we wanted to see the who verb in there. So here's the H, and we'll look down we go from E's to E-I to who, and the whole root is talking about swimming, right? With some type of wading or slow moving type of thing. And so that's the Clinkit verb dictionary. Uh, with these electric versions, you know, these PDF versions, you can also look things up fairly fast. Like you can enter um, uh, maybe gaze, we'll see what comes up. And then we can find it, the root, and then we can also find it in English, right? So then if we're curious and we want to see a little bit more about verb roots, another document you can look at is the Jeff Lear STEM list. Uh, all of this stuff you could find under the resources print and web tab under clinkitlanguage.com. This one is not as user-friendly, but it starts to show you like a bunch of little pieces, right? So if we looked up who here, uh, wade or swim on the surface, right? And so this one, like it's a bunch of notes and the way he's marking some things is something we can talk about later. But if there's certain words that you're hearing and you're not finding it, you can dig through these different things. Like there's one, I think it's right down here, quash, lady slippers. So that's in a story. And I remember I, I found this word just sort of browsing through, because sometimes you want to just browse through this stuff. Like, oh, I didn't, oh yeah, there's a word for that. There's a word for that. And then I remembered quash, because I remember the first time I found one on Grendel Island, and it looked like a big tongue, because it had fallen off the rock. And I showed it to people, and they said, oh, bring that back to Audrey's mom. She'll love you forever. And I did. And then when I encountered it in a story, and it was being translated as large sea urchin, I thought, but I saw that somewhere else. And so sometimes even in, like, Jeff Lear's notes and other folks' notes, they'll have different entries at different places because you're looking at documenting a whole language, which is huge. Uh, and then you could look up verb roots, and what does that particular verb root mean. And then there he's got 
another document which is he tried to document every single instance of every verb and so this one has a bunch of verbs that the verb dictionary itself doesn't have uh, and some of them were just they didn't they didn't discover you know they didn't get to that one in their own exploration of the language uh, other ones you know one time I was having a conversation with uh, Dick Dauenhauer and he said nation story they got all the verbs all of them I said no they didn't and he said what didn't they get I said well you can't poop you can't pee you can't make more people and we got words for that and so all of those are in here so you know if you wanted to know those you could you could find them. Uh, and then there's another document which I'll put up uh, which is fabulous the mother of the Pacific Ocean Colleen Bunn, she typed this up about two summers ago. Uh, so you have a typed version so you can search for things. Uh, but then you could just see how the depth of these verbs, and this is going to be one of our big challenges as advanced students of Tlingit. It's not just settling for the just, we know how to say bite. But then there's all these different sort of things. So you got mosquito, chewing on it. Uh, it's just chewing in general chewed it, chewed on it, bit it, uh, bit it, got a grip on it with their teeth, is biting it, uh, mosquitoes are biting people, uh, tried to bite it and missed, chewed it over, bit at somebody, uh, they're exchanging, they're biting at each other, which is a metaphor for like they're really going at it in the argument, is biting it, has it in his mouth, um, you know, and are they joined together by like chains or something that might bite onto each other or something? There's a lot of different words we might use, a lot of different ways we might use that. So this is that kind of analytical exploration of things where if you're kind of, I've been doing this for a while, I'm getting bored of this, here's something else. Go and just look through here. There's all kinds of verbs. Uh, there's a verb for when animals repeatedly would pull someone into the water, you know, so. Anyways, uh, the last thing is this summer I made these uh, study cards, which I can make some more of if you guys are into it. So these are like five by seven cards. These are the most common uh, pronouns sort of in these categories. And we can talk about these categories, but the idea was to get folks to practice using these. And probably spending extra attention on objects and subjects, which are used in verbs. Then here's an illustration of uh, the basics of Clinkit verbal structure, like how it's basically put together. So if you want to learn how to use verbs, um, objects, subjects, and this conjugation, everything tends to happen in those three areas. And learning how to navigate those in your brain is a really big part of putting Clinkit together. And we go through this transition of being artificial speakers where we're sort of manufacturing it by putting these things together and then saying them to more natural speakers where we've done that enough that we can just recall it and our brain does a lot of that behind the scenes work for us because we've done it enough times. And then it goes through, I, I just picked, I don't know how many verbs, like maybe a dozen of them and, we, and just conjugated them for either command or hortative, prohibitive, imperfective, positive, negative, Perfective, positive, negative, future, positive, negative. So then you've got these, so you can just sort of try and master these. Then it goes down, uh, I, we, you, y'all, she or he, them, somebody, or it happens. So then, so this is sort of a verb kind of spring off sheet. So you can just sort of look these up real quick, like walk, going somewhere or driving somewhere. Those ones get a little bit more tricky and we'll talk about why but then you can also look at some of these things and as we start to talk about these other components of the verb you can keep referring back to these cards and as you're memorizing this stuff then you start thinking about well, why is the stem high why is it low why is it short why is it long those types of things okay I took a little longer than I thought any questions um. So like looking at the Lear dictionary, how do you, how do you go from kind of
kind of looking at that and being like, oh, that's interesting to using it in your everyday like language. How do you add that to your functional vocabulary? Yeah, so sometimes you're just browsing and just not curious, but other times I think as you use the language a lot, you start figuring out the things you don't know how to say, and then you go into there. And you'll get to a point where even if you just look at a verb, you'll be able to figure out how to use it in all these different modes like this. And so that's the thing is putting it into use. So it's a trick because you're going to find some of the most common verbs like cooking, eating, cleaning, dress. You know, think of all the things that people talk about, right? Like something happened, um, somebody got hurt, somebody you know, died, and all this other stuff. And then you'll figure out how to talk about all of that stuff. And so I think you start with kind of the essentials. But then when you're getting a little bit burnt out of that, you just go through and just browse some stuff and just find stuff that's cool. And then as you're translating, then you'll also you'll start figuring out all this stuff that people are actually saying. And then uh, there's a bunch of videos out there from this conversation project that have never been translated. I'll see if we can get some of those and start doing work on it. It'll be fun. Rene. Nasa. I have a question about the diacritics that are used in the Jeff Lear stem list. I noticed that there's an upside down B over some vowels. Can you explain that? Yeah, so, uh, so the way, so this kind of downward mark means that that's going to be low and long. Okay, I knew that one, but under the, what you said, the lady slipper, uh -huh. right around that area, there's, well, and if that's just a one A, it's whoosh. Yeah, that's or it's low tone, whoosh. Because that downward mark means it's long and low. Long, low. Yeah, so as he was, as he was writing this, he only wrote one vowel. Okay, that's what he did with the interior spelling system too. He had he kind of made it a little bit of shortcuts there. Yeah, so with this, I wouldn't go to this for spelling. I would just go to this for interpretation of a particular verb root or a little okay. a little chunk of something. Because Klinka has a bunch of words that are little things chunked together. And this is a great resource for that as well. But what about that upside down V over some vowels? It's written in, I think. Oh, like right there? E, that's a right side up B. Okay, upside down. Let me try and find one. It was like a tone mark, but it was over a vowel. Uh, what is it? Yellow paper? Yeah, oh, on the yellow paper. It's long and high. Right here. Oh, city. That one, yeah. Yeah. Long and high. Who had it? Is that um, two A's there? Yeah, so there's two A's here, but for some reason it's going up and down. I don't know. So may, I was wondering if maybe it meant it could be high or low. It's usually Which, meant as high, long and high. Okay, it's so that V is high. Yeah, the V is, it's usually, it's that circumflex and it's long and high because that's how we ended up writing in the in the inland, um, in the Lear Ritter. Yeah. One day I'll try to learn that. I don't know if that's, I mean, you could, I, I think. You just well, I want to read that book that they did with Angela Sidney, but I just can't read it yet. Oh, Elizabeth Nyman? Yeah, Elizabeth Nyman, sorry. Uh, Sumik David Russell Jensen retypes pretty much that whole book. So I can send you those chapters, and it's in the, it's in the Downhower orthography. I would love to see that. Oh. Okay. okay, I'll put those, and then the version that Yelit Uchtla typed up of Jeff Lear's verb notes. And so the, the verb notes, this yellow paper that we're looking at, I think is a much better resource than the stem list. But the stem list is just good to just sort of look at now and then. As far as if you hear a verb and you're trying to figure out what it means, I generally rec recommend you look at Kagi uh, Shawu's stuff. Well, I usually look at the verb dictionary first, nation story. And if I don't find it there, then I go into uh, Jeff Lear stuff. 
and then I look for it there. And then if I can't find it, I'll go ask somebody. Uh, but they've, they've got, between the, these two resources, I was probably 95 or 98% of the verbs written down. I mean, there's some that we didn't get, but uh, most of them are in here. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so uh, one of the things that I put on here, uh, so this is our class web page here for Advanced Clinkit, is there's some audio here, and uh, we're going to listen to it. We'll listen to it off my computer, but if the sound is kind of junky, uh, feel free to uh, listen to it on your own if you want to. So the, this is what this thing should look, at, look like. There's a little speaker button and a little play button. When I push play, it should yeah, expand. And then uh, if I push this downward arrow, I can download it. So you can download these. These are MP3s. Uh, this is the first in a series of about maybe 15 Raven stories that uh, she told all in a row. It might have been two actual recordings, but they just go right through and uh, I have a recording too, it's about an hour and a half long that has all of them and it's just, it's magnificent. Uh, but we're going to listen to uh, this Yuqisqoqayq story and then we'll just kind of, uh, we'll read it too. So uh, first we'll listen to this. So get your listening ears on. And this is Kasgei. Susie James, she's Chukinshaw. You guys online, can you hear that? Okay. No, not yet. Okay, so this was the problem that we had with this uh, speaker system. So I think I got to play it through the television. Could you hear that? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to move one of these. So it's about eight minutes long. And then next week we'll probably, I don't think we'll have time to read it, but next week we'll, we'll read it line by line and sort of start looking at how she's using the language. Is it coming out of those things too? I heard it, I just didn't know where it was coming from. Yeah. Yeah. can <laughs> you 
Okay, how was that? And uh, those you, you can all of you can listen to it again. I recommend listening to it actually a bunch of times, and then we're gonna kind of crawl through uh, the audio. So this recorded in the late 1960s. Teuchne did the initial transcription and translation, and then uh, there's been about one, two, three, four of us working on it for about two years, trying to get it ready. And, and this is this is really high level. She talks very fast. Uh, she has a sound substitution. I don't know if you you hear her say "hagu hagu lock hagu lock." So what is lock? Does anybody know what lock is? What if I said uhalaya? That's how my great grandpa used to say it. Uhalaya. N, N for L? Yes. N. Yes. So knock is an octopus. So she's, she uses a voiced L regularly. Uh, the N switches to a voiced L a lot. And so you'll see how we sort of mark that. We put an N with an underline because it's just kind of an unusual sound when it comes to Shingit. Uh, this is Yuqis Kukhek. This is uh, Raven's birth, Raven and his uncle. Uh, so uh, it's 7 o'clock now, but we got a little bit of a late start. You guys want to be done now, or do you want to go for about 10 more minutes? Okay. Okay. So uh, what I'd like to do is have you read a sentence. So read up to the period. Uh, just read the Tlingit, and then we'll sort of talk about anything that you wanted to... Is there anything you don't understand in that particular sentence? Because then we can sort of walk through these different components. Uh, and the language goes by very fast. If, you've, if you haven't listened to Susie James before, uh, you should, because this will get you ready for like some, because then you hear other people talking like, ooh, this is like a nice walk in the park, <laughs> because she's, uh, Bessie Cooley said, I guess she said, I think she said, her mouth is like a machine, and I think Shikshani uh, Marge said, she's talking fast. Uh, so who wants to read the first sentence? One thing that kind of gave me goosebumps was when she started whispering into it. She does very, like, she's a very involved, because there's a, and there's really neat as we read it and you listen to it more, then you'll see there's certain points where it's just really fun. Like when she's doing the whispering stuff. And she, and she does that a lot 
through her stories and she does she sings a lot of the songs uh i just finished one by kuchain and it's raven in the box of daylight and he sings the box of daylight song blew me away it's just amazing okay gook somebody read uh Everybody understand how that works? Right? Anything you don't like recognize that's in there? Okay, yake chukan, yake. Uh, so there's quite a few uh, verbs that you can sort of put into this mode to go along doing that. Like you could say, that guy's just going along farting. You could say that. Yeah, and so they're not always motion verbs, but they could be implied motion. Like somebody is going along doing this particular thing. And so the ya and the na and the short sem show us that this is what we call a progressive imperfective, like it's in this process of happening. Qah is the verb root. We usually see it long, qah, and it means to cry. Ayanas qah ayu, ayu and awe and ahe. They're used aya, they're used kind of interchangeably. Speakers tend to have ones that they prefer. Generally speaking, ayu is referring to something long time ago or long time from now. Awe is more in the middle. Aya and ahe are a little bit more kind of immediate. Is, is, um, is that part yan, yan askach, that part yan, is that like the directional like towards? The ya just means to go along doing something. Okay. So it doesn't. And so this, that's a really good question because there's certain things that'll pop up that don't really mean anything. They just have, they just use, they're used to put the verb into a certain mode. So when you hear people say, ya nagut, it's the exact same type of verb. Mm -hmm. but the ya should be separate from the na part because a lot of people want to just write it, ya nagut, but ya is hunger. Ya nagut, ya naskach. But they, the other thing is when you have something open, Right before a verb, it tends to just run right into it. Anaskachaya, mm -hmm. and you hear people say it. Shawat is a woman, so this woman is going along crying. Hayi uh, She's the only one that I know of that tells us what Raven's mother's name is. So you should note that. Uh, we want to keep that name alive. You do a sock. You that raven's mother. And then the qua, uh, it doesn't always mean however or although. Sometimes it does, but it, a lot of times it just means this is who we're talking about, right? Or, you know, because sometimes but it's just sort of focus on who we're talking about, right? Like, you want pizza, you want dry fish, uh, you want potatoes. Me, though, I want eggs, right? Okay. Who wants to do the next one? Cook. Okay. And when we tie these together like that, it means she says, Awech ayanaskah away. And sometimes in in oratory, you'll, you'll hear people do that. Well, they'll stretch out certain things, but where can it stretch? Um, and then in the translation, we didn't really stretch anything out in there, but so it's the same. So you see some re re repeating. So she's going along crying. The awe is on either side, which is just giving a little cushion between things, saying awe. So it's really important for us to know that she's She's going along crying. It's repeated twice. It's also got these things around it so that we're kind of focusing in on it. 
Oop. We'll just do a couple more. Okay. Anything you guys don't recognize in there? So do yet key. And so the, the other thing is clink it front load stuff. That means we're talking about this woman. So once we say do yet key, that's her children. It can't be anybody else's. We know that it's hers because that's who, it's like we've put her onto the stage. So that's of course who we're talking about. That's how clink it works. Is we'll just keep talking about her and we'll let you know if we're talking about somebody else. Then we'll go back to talking about her. That's usually how clink it likes to work. Do yet ki awa. What is this tle business? Negative. It's tle. So the tle on its own. T L short low E. Is it, is it like a when or then or? It's like a when or a then, right? So it's, it's, and you just got to pay attention to how it's, how it works. Cause this is one of the things that doesn't d translate directly, but you'll see speakers start using it sometimes two or three times in one sentence. And that's telling you like, when this happened, this other thing was happening or, you know, it's, it's really it's starting to put things into a sequence. So here we could probably say then, uh, what about a in? The uncle is, oh. he's coming up with that a in part. So we look over here. It's a verb. It's to kill things in multiples, right? You would awa jak one thing, but you would awa in a bunch of things. It's to kill a plural things, right? A in we de kach. Uh, so in is the plural. Yes, it's the verb root. It's a verb root for killing off plural things, right? And so this is this is a good. Uh, so again, we can go to the Clinket verb dictionaries where I would go first, and then we go to the Clinket section, starting with the period. And we see in, and it's right there. So there's another in, but we're not picking berries. We're killing things, and they're probably related. But you ever say in kawanik? I've heard that before. Yeah. So that's that's not a verb, but that's a really good that's a really good uh, question. So when you say in, ach in, do in. Uh, that's a different one. And so there's a bunch of these things that sound the same, but they're different. So that's one of these things. Like, uh, in really means with you. Do in with him or her. Ach in, but so, and we just start to get a feel for is it a verb or not? Because in, in Klinket, there's lots, in every language, there's lots of homonyms. Things that sound the same, but they mean something different. But then we just start to recognize by First, by I think looking at it on a page, but then when we listen to it, we'll, we'll hear that, you know, ka a in. And then we, we just sort of get a feel for that. It's to kill, you know, he is killing them. Dukakch, the ch is on there to mark that he's the one who's doing it. Ka a in. Right? And so uh, when we translated this one, we didn't put those time markers really in there. But what they're, what they're really talking about is just saying, like she's walking along crying. Um, that uncle, and so this is another tricky part too, whenever you're translating, is it says, do yet ki a we tle a in we do kak tle a in. A couple of the tricky parts in there is repetition, but another thing, is you have du yetki and du kakch, and the du are referring to two different people. Her children, but her children's uncle, because it's her brother, right? If we if we know the story, the basically at the the frame to frame the story, there's a woman who has babies, uh, and she just thinks about being lonely, and she has babies. Uh, nobody gives, nobody, that doesn't involve another person. And then 
her brother, who is the moon, he kills them. And then we're going to get to how he does it. Well, no, don't usually get why, but it's probably because he's nervous that the nephew is going to come and try and take all his stuff or something like that. Uh, we're going to get his name. Uh, and then we'll, we'll see how he kills them. But that's what we'll look at next week. Because we'll, we'll start walking through this. Uh, so maybe for Monday, we'll just start with this. We'll see if anybody's got anything you want to talk about. We'll try and talk and think it for a little bit. We'll look at this story. And then we'll look at, just keep sort of, we'll talk about a little bit of grammar and structure stuff. Uh, and that's what we'll do on Monday. Okay. And cheese. Good. Ah. Cheese. Finish cheese. This audio is up there, but I'm not going to give you the cheat sheet. We'll go through a little bit at a time so we can, just so we can sort of talk about it. But uh, listen to it. It's such good stuff. Is there a way you can download it and like listen to it like on a plane? Yeah, yeah, they're MP3s. Awesome. So you can you can download it to a computer. Uh, I don't know how it would work on like a smartphone. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Okay. But um, yeah. So whenever you look at that web page, it should look like this. That little downward arrow. Click on that, and it's going to download the audio file. Then you could do, you know, however you're dealing with your phones and devices and whatever. Let me get it from there. Let me know if that doesn't work. Let me know. I can send you a link. Hoocha.